good morning or should I say good afternoon maybe even good evening depending on where you're located in the world at the present time welcome welcome to the segment of one digital experience presentation allow me to introduce ourselves my name is Jean-Luc Ambrosi and I run the marketing and digital functions at Telstra Super in Melbourne Australia and our co-presenter today is Esme Etrovic and Esme is the head of digital at Telstra Super and we're very pleased to present to you today we would like to show you in this presentation how we have built the strategy and developed the framework and overall how we have attempted to deliver a deeper member experience to start with, let me provide you with a little bit of background on the industry. Superannuation, the equivalent of 401k in the USA, suffers from very low engagement from members across the board. The other challenge that the industry faces is a lot of members do not really understand superannuation and the different components of superannuation. And financial literacy is not as high as we would like. What happens on top of that is that there's a lot of changes in regulation. So the system tends to change very often, almost on a yearly basis. So that gives you almost the perfect storm, which makes that members tend not only to be disengaged, but often lack trust in the system as the system keeps changing year on year. So how did we go about solving the problem? The problem being how do you engage members? How do you help them achieve financial success in retirement? Well, we had to define digital as the primary channel of communication for members. That was the first thing. But the second thing, and where we had to create a strategic bet in a way, was really to say that personalization was gonna be at the center of the relationship with members. In the age of the customers, personalization was going to be our big bet. But before we started with uh, the digital ecosystem and personalization, there was a number of things we needed to do. The first one was to upgrade our brand. Our brand was built for paper and we needed a brand that was built for digital. So we changed the brand look and feel, we changed the way the brand appeared, we changed the energy that the brand was going to convey to our members and ensuring that that brand would work in all the different digital space that we could encounter, whether it's website, social media and so on. The second thing then that we did was really to work on our segmentation model and develop a very deep understanding of our members. And that segmentation models is multi-layered and that segmentation models also include additional data that we can use to refine uh, the targeting. Building the digital ecosystem, of course, was a key component and a big, maybe the biggest component from uh, a people and uh, dollar value and it was critical to build this ecosystem uh, for today, but also for tomorrow, making sure that the ecosystem we were going to build uh, could evolve over time. Because as we understood today's issues, we do not understand tomorrow's issues. And the last component was to take a, an approach to targeting and to say, how do we want to engage with our members? How do we want to talk to them? How do we want them to talk to us? And really use the segmentation, use the data, and use the digital ecosystem to really uh, assist us in developing an approach to member, really targeting them, providing relevant information, relevant content, and relevant nudges. So building the digital ecosystem was all about leveraging the Sidecore platform and we chosen the Sidecore platform uh, because we could really leverage it and do all those things, all that innovation we really wanted to do but couldn't do with a limited CMS infrastructure. That allowed us to look and develop different components um, from rebuilding the UX, the entire member experience and critically uh, rewriting all the content and rewriting the content to match the new experience we wanted members to have with our fund 
and our digital infrastructure. Uh, that meant also having a new site architecture, a new navigation, and innovating in terms of functionalities, creating functionalities to make the life of our members a lot easier, a lot simpler. This was augmented by a new brand, a new brand that was purposely built for digital and that was fitting very well our strategy and the sense of innovation we wanted to bring to the fore. So we adapted that to both the new secure and public destinations and later on to an app that we launched as well. Uh, in terms of personalization, the ability to integrate uh, the segmentation into the sidecore platform was absolutely essential for us in order to de um, deliver personalized experience at different levels and for different types of members. Let's have a look now at the drivers of the experience. So when it came to build a personalized approach, we really considered two factors. The first one being the functional factor, what affects the rational needs. The second one being perceptions. And really here we're talking about the emotions. So that side of the brain that drives emotions. And we know how important emotion is when it comes to engagement. So with a functional need, this was all about leveraging the digital infrastructure, making it easy for members to access the information, be able to deal with different aspects of their accounts and so on, and really making it attractive, making it in a package that was pleasing to members. But really to drive the emotions, how do you do this? How do you drive engagement? How do you make people interested in something they're not that interested to start with? And this is where the ability to bring images, to bring messages, to start a dialogue with members about issues that really concern them is absolutely critical. And this is really the basis of the engagement strategy. So to design a model to deliver a segment of one strategy, the segmentation itself is only the very beginning. We really needed to add functional data to enrich the segmentation. So functional data being what products do members have, what sort of balance, how long have they been with us, and so on. If on top of that, uh, we could add the behavioral data. So what are members doing? Um, are they opening our emails? What pages do they visit on the website, what sort of campaigns or messages do they respond to? Do they have a relationship with uh, financial advisors? That suddenly starts giving you a lot of data that you can add. So between the segmentation, the functional data and the behavioral data, you start having thousands of variable that really can drive very personalized development, very personalized messages, very personalized interaction and give you those one-to-one -one insight, that tailored content allows you to build those targeted campaigns. But really critically for us, we can have a relationship with a member for 50 years. So we really need to look at that targeted content and the evolution of that targeted content over a period of time in order to start a conversation that could last a very, very long time. So let's look at an example of a personalized experience. Here we've put two different types of member, a young, non-engaged members, and a retiree, very engaged with his pension fund. So in this instance, what you can see is that for each of those members, we have all the data sets that allow us to understand the members. That's the data set you see on top of the two members. So these comprise what we talked about before, the segment, the sub-segment, the functional data and the behavioral data. This gives us insights um, and gives us the ability to provide different types of information and nudges that belong and are that are adequate and relevant to those two very different members. Then on the very top, what you see are the mechanism we have at our disposal to do this. So in particular, we look at content, whether content is on the website 
on the newsletter we provide or outbound communications, promotions like campaigns, uh, different type of activity we can do with members, critically insights and the ability to provide insight through different mechanisms and finally uh, out of insight you might want also to do nudging and use digital mechanisms in particular to drive that nudging. And what we do here is no matter what channel we use, we will use the same methodology. So we can reinforce message, we can reinforce uh, the insights we want to provide to the members to drive uh, change, to drive the right behavior. And this over a period of time. So we spoke a lot about data. And if I can summarize in one sentence, the segment of one strategy and the use of the data and the use and the leveraging of the digital ecosystem. This is all about creating relevance. Relevance for members. Relevance allowing us to provide them with information, messages, education, nudging that will be attractive to them, that will allow them to take action, that will allow them to be empowered to manage their retirement outcome. And at the end of the day, ensuring that our value proposition is attractive to them and there's a reason for them, both a rational and emotional reason for them to get engaged with this part of their life. So I want to touch quickly on how we use um, the data on, on the website. So we've built a custom uh, member information hub or data mart if you want. And what we do with this data map is we provide custom data. We provide data that we send to uh, enrich the site call data, which is in some form limited. So that really enriches and provide a lot more scope to drive personalization and then also to drive automation based on defined triggers. And that's really what creates that tailored member experience. So the ability to enrich the cycle data with the different data sets that we have on the member information hub is really the key here. Thank you very much, Jean-Luc. I'm Esme Aterovic and I'm going to take you through the second part of today's presentation where we speak a bit about how we operationalise this segment of one and brought personalisation to our members and also some of the results that we're seeing. It was important for us when operationalising personalisation and starting to implement our segment of one that it wasn't just seen as a function of the digital team to utilise Sitecore for, but rather that it was seen for the wider marketing and digital unit and also that the, the rest of the business understood the value of it and understood what we were hoping to achieve. So really it was important for us to take everyone along for that journey and break it down to be quite a simple task what data do we know? What do we know of the members? What information are we driving them to? What experience do we want to, them to have? And what is the most valuable for them to know? And then we could start to apply it to particular experiences or engagement points. And we just wanted to really make it part of the everyday thinking and planning for the marketing and digital unit. The logical first place for us to start was the home page. Given that it is that entry point and provides the funnel to the rest of the website experience, it gave us a great opportunity to tailor that to our four key member segments. So what we did was build out personalised experiences where the imagery, the quick links, the calls to action and the articles further down the page that you might get were really tailored to the members life stage and gave them direction to the key pieces of information across the website where they really we knew they wanted to get to and we, we test and learn with that so we knew what members were seeing we knew that they were getting driven to the right action and then we started to build it out further across the website with other calls to action promotions and sort of deeper insights for members as well We really wanted to make sure that this was not just a, on the website, but that we really did build it out across the business and in our other marketing activities as well. So we wanted to personalise our email letters that go to members. So these are highly not only segmented, but the articles and calls to action are driven at that persona and the personalised level as well. 
In our statements, we personalise the calls to action and promotion, as well as the insights that members get. So that was driven by the same modelling. What do we know of the member and what actions do we want to drive them to? Is it getting a balanced projection? Is it subscribing to digital statements and so on? And then we really applied that to our campaign. So we, we really wanted to have a really focused campaign activity where we know that we're driving members to specific actions and giving them specific information that they need or desire from their superannuation fund. As we progress deeper into our personalisation journey and the unit and the teams and the individuals were really comfortable applying personalisation and comfortable with the strategy, we were able then to pivot and become proactive when members needed us to. So for instance, during the COVID-19 crisis and the associated market volatility, we were able to build ourselves a dedicated microsite within a matter of days, which was highly personalised to the members' life stage. So the young members got far more information about the impact of their superannuation in the long term and what they could do to stay the course, whereas members nearing retirement would have had insights that were far more applicable to their life stage. It applied not only to the content that we gave to them, but the, the videos and the insights and information and calls to action that we provided to them. And again, it was integrated across all of the associated marketing activities of the wider unit. So what does that mean from a results perspective? You know, we've successfully implemented personalisation and we know that members are seeing an impact from it, but it was important for us that we measured that so that we know what's working, what's not working and where we can improve in the future. So we, all digital metrics have risen since we've launched the strategy. There's been an increase in all digital results that we, we track year on year. And we're also able to derive that members who are engaged with Telstra Super are 50% li less likely to leave the fund. So that was a key piece of information for us that personalised experiences drive engagement and knowing that engagement leads to retention. This was a key piece of our strategy for for members. So we had an increase of 51% in self-service transactions. Our monthly logins have increased 95%. And we know that at least 85% of our members experience personalization on the website. So not only are we seeing really strong digital results across all metrics, we're also seeing strong fund results and marketing activity results. So satisfaction with the fund has increased. There's higher engagement across all activities, be that logins to the website, viewing of videos, consuming of content, or actually the actual transactions that members are completing. Our email open rate by us providing far more relevant, targeted and tailored content and email activities has risen to 42%, which is exceptionally high and well above the industry average. We saw huge engagement from members during COVID-19 and particularly during that first initial peak of market volatility where markets dropped and there was high uncertainty from members. Our website in tra traffic increased by 72% and the actions that members were taking on their account increased by 94%. We saw that members' desire to consume information was really high as well. So there was a 30% increase on our already high open rates and click-through rates. So members were being driven to the COVID microsite. And then as a result, we were serving up content there, which was hugely relevant to them. So our video channel engagement increased by 520% over that duration, where members were consuming both the CEO updates and regular updates from our chief investment officer as well that helped support them through that time. Thank you very much for listening to Telstra Super's personalisation journey and how we've been able to provide deep and engaging experiences for our members. I hope you're able to take something away and, and some actions that you might be able to apply for your own customers or even how you might start with personalisation and operationalise it within your own business. Enjoy the rest of the symposium and I uh, hope to see some of you in person potentially next year. Thank you very much. Bye.